Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 66. Uh, the title of the discourse is The Simile of the Quail. And uh, in this discourse, Buddha is basically explaining to us and telling us to give up the sensual pleasures, our attachments to sensual pleasures. Because what these attachments are? These attachments are like fetters. These attachments are like chains which keep us bind to samsara, right? So this basically discourses on that. So basically in this, it's mentioned that Venerable Udai was there. And Venerable Udai, when he was meditating, he got this uh, realization that the Buddha has rid us of so many things that bring us suffering and gifted us of so many things that bring happiness. He has rid, get rid of, he has rid us of so many unskillful things and gifted us so many skillful things so he went up to the buddha and said that you know uh, that especially regarding this this point of eating at one time of the day or not eating at night time or wrong time so he acknowledged that buddha what you told us was so useful to us we had faith in you and we followed that and uh, uh, it it uh, kind of worked well for us so this the story behind this is that when Buddha said that I eat only one time, so some mendicants they did not follow. So there are other suttas where some mendicant uh, said that I will not follow and all. You know, then finally it was made as a rule, right? Uh, that not eat, um, eating at a wrong time is not allowed. So basically, this discourse, Udai got this realization that when Buddha says us to do something, it's not out of some harshness that he is imposing it on us. It's basically for our own welfare. Like for example, when Buddha said that eat one time a day, it keeps you healthy. It's a fact. And it's today science has also proved, proven, research has also proven that eating one time a day helps helps a person. Now, not necessarily everyone can do it, but Buddha encouraged this practice. So, so then he, he was discussing this point. I'm just talking about the main things. Otherwise, it's a long discourse. So... Then Buddha actually said that uh, this is when Buddha said about two kinds of people are there. One are foolish people and one are wise people. So foolish people, when I tell them to give up something, they say what's such a trivial, insignificant thick thing as this. This ascetic is much too strict. That means Buddha is so strict, right? They don't give it up and they nurse bitterness towards me, right? They nurse bitterness towards the Buddha and... Uh, for mendicants who want to train, this becomes a strong, firm bond, a tie. That means this becomes a barrier for them, uh, not allowing them to get liberated. Right? As compared to that, Buddha says that uh, there are wise people. When they uh, when I ask them to give something up, they say, "What we have to just give up such a trivial, insignificant thing as this?" When the Buddha, when the blessed one tells us to give it up, the holy one tells us to let it go. They give it up and they don't nurse bitterness towards me. And when the mannequin who wants to train has given that up, they live relaxed, unruffled, surviving on charity, their hearts free as a wild deer. For them, that bond is weak, feeble, rotten and uns unsubstantial. So Buddha was very, you know, uh, uh, you know, knowledgeable in terms of what are the things that to keep us bound. So it's that's why it's one of the things that suggested even for lay people to... Read upon the Vinaya rules, the monastic rules. So it's not that we have to follow those rules, but how beautifully those rules have been laid down because Buddha knew what where the barrier is, right? So he has he laid down those rules. There's a book, I think Bhikkhu's Rules Guide for Lay People. It is available at Access to Insight website, or you can just check, type in on Google Bhikkhu's Rules Guide for Lay People. There you will find that book where all the Vinaya rules. Are, that are laid down so friends that is like the gold standard right so as lay people will we, we definitely won't reach that gold standard living in a day-to-day -day life but definitely we can try to you know uh, achieve it uh, as far as possible and uh, for example there is this thing about on the opposite days the days of observance the full moon days uh, people try the uh, people who follow the buddha's path they try to observe higher precepts, more than five precepts. They like try to follow the eight or ten precepts, right? So that is also one thing we can build on. So we have to 
continuously think upon how we can uh, come more and more on the buddha's path friends this life that we've got it's like uh, it's so precious that we've got a human life first of all right so precious and second to have to be in the dhamma right for example if you're watching this video till now right so uh, i am I'm, i'm so you know uh, uh, i think you you and myself we are all so fortunate that we are in the buddha's knowledge so we don't have to let go of this opportunity now right so so yeah so then buddha gives the analogy of a of a quail quail is like a bird in hindi it is called bater and which is tied to a vine vine is like a kind of a small branches right so so buddha said that a quail when it is tied to a vine what happens it is basically tied it, it cannot run away similarly if we if we don't give up all the attachments then we are like tied to those attachments right but then as then buddha gave the analogy of a royal elephant right a royal elephant you tie it with a chain a, a, even if he just moves it the he will get free from the chains so we have to be that royal bull elephant we have to give up those tendencies and then these tendencies will not the the uh, the attachments won't bind us otherwise we will continue to remain bound by food sex uh, uh sites like whatever television or netflix or something right all these things we will keep ourselves bound so and and what give back to noble truth number 2 the reason for our suffering is craving so unless we are free from craving we will not become free so day in and day out as we live our life our tendency should be be more mindful of of am i getting stuck in craving right me mindful of your intentions as you do, go about doing things where you are getting stuck where we are all getting stuck keep thinking about that then so they, then there is an analogy of a poor man with a few possessions so that poor man says that he sees an ascetic's life and he says it's so pleasant but he is not able to give up his broken down hovel uh, or a broken down couch or three four things he has he doesn't even like give that and become a bhikkhu so then you then then the bounds are strong for that person right so that is all that is coming out then buddha says about four types of people in the world right so here let's understand what are the four types of people buddha buddha is saying first type they take a person practicing to give up and let go of the attachments right as they do so memories and thoughts connected with the attachments beset them right so the memories and thoughts keep coming back and they tolerate them and don't give up give them up so buddha says they those are those people are chained they, those people are fettered they are not detached so come to the second where take another person who is practicing to give up and let go of attachments as they do so memory and thoughts connected with the attachments beset them they don't tolerate them but give up get rid of them eliminate them and obliterate them even those like uh, 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 buddha says are better they are not detached third type of people buddha says take another people practicing to give up and let go of attachments as they do so every so often they lose their mindfulness and the memories and thoughts connected with attachments beset them mindfulness is slow to come up but they quickly give it up get rid of eliminate and obliterate those thoughts right so again similar way do the do, even those people buddha says are fettered because their mindfulness is not that established so completely right so it comes and goes right so as like we do as lay people and you as you and me we our mindfulness is not totally established it comes and goes right so again those people are also chained then uh, buddha says take another person who at- understands that attachment is the root of suffering who gets up this clear understanding that uh, the attachment is the root of suffering is freed with the ending of attachments i call this person detached not fettered right buddha says person understands that attachment is the root of suffering he is freed with the ending of attachments i call this person detached that's the person who buddha says is detached right so that is one thing four kinds of people that is coming out in this discourse then 
Buddha says five kinds of st sensual stimulation. It has come in other discourses as well. Sights. What are the five? Sights that are known by the eye that are likable. So sounds known by the ear. Smells known by the nose. Tastes, tastes known by the tongue. Touches known by the body. These are the five kinds of sensual stimulation. The pleasure and happiness that arise from these five kinds of sensual stimulation is called the sensual pleasure. A filthy, ordinary, ignoble pleasure. Ignoble means not noble. Such pleasure should not be cultivated or developed, but should be feared, I say. So Buddha says these kind of sensual pleasures, we should not cultivate, develop them, but we should fear them. Because when we engage in them, these sensual pleasures, we should know that we are creating more suffering for ourselves. right? But then Buddha talks about that... Uh, uh, Buddha gives example of a mendicant who is secluded from sensual pleasures and enters into the four jhanas. The first sec absorption, second absorption, third absorption and fourth absorption. And he gets the pleasure of renunciation, pleasure of seclusion, pleasure of peace, pleasure of awakening. Such pleasure should be cultivated and developed and should not be feared. So Buddha says, not all pleasures are bad. This is what Buddha realized. That when, when he was like, uh, in, during his awakening journey, when he was practicing all the self-mortification, you know, extreme forms of mortification, he did not eat and everything. Then he realized, no, this is wrong. Giving pain to the body at all times, this is wrong. If I have to get the pleasure of awakening, of renunciation, then I have to keep my body sound, body in a good condition. Then he started eating some, some or the other thing, right? He gave up those extreme practices. So not all pleasures are bad. The sensual pleasures are bad, but these pleasures are good and it should be cultivated. Right? So that was coming out. Right. So this is it. Uh, this is like the main points that I could gather from this uh, discourse. Uh, the link to the entire discourse is there in the description. Do check out uh, the discourse and uh, share your learnings and insights from this discourse in the comment section. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.